Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hello. Monday afternoon, big week this week. Feeling good, a lot of people excited. Customers are coming back, things are happening. We got a really special guest today that's going to help us with the other side of that equation. How some of the one of the most successful and established uh, companies out there that focus on recruiting, uh, Blue Sky Services. Sean Day is 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 a, is a big part of that organization, leads that effort, and he's going to share with us kind of some of the inside secrets of what they learn and what they figured out and things that they know that can help all of us uh, build the workforce that we want to build in a uh, post, I'm mean, going to say post-COVID, kind of a mid-COVID-19 world. Hey, Sean, how are you today? I'm really well, Tom. How are you? Liz, how are you? I'm good. I'm so excited that you're here, Sean. I know this is like, a, like an evergreen topic, and right now it's even harder for a lot of people. I'm specifically thinking of one of my um, Success Mastermind members that lives on the East Coast, yeah. and she is really struggling. So uh, I'm on the West Coast, and we seem to be having a little bit easier of a time, but I'm so excited for all your great um, advice and ideas and suggestions. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for every, uh, not waiting, I, I know that so many of our people are just like waiting to get answers, they feel so lost, you know? It, 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 it could be a tricky thing. Um, it's always a tricky thing to recruit, but there's there's certain fundamentals that really never go away, just like everything else. There's But there, there there's changes. It does change quite a bit. It's I always tell people it's so parallel to sales and marketing in so many different ways. And I've got, you know, a lot of experience in sales and management and stuff like that as well. So I... I I just always, if you can take a step back and think of it just like sales, there's this urgency it, it, when some prospect calls you and you do certain things and then some you don't want to have as customers, some you do, yet you kind of feel your way through that. It's very similar with recruiting, right? And, and it's very urgent and, and you want to find out who's going to work for your company and, and who isn't. And, and there's a lot of moving parts to that, but that's in general what I tell people to think about. There's so much going on, you know, within our businesses right now. And okay, I'm gonna get out of the way, Liz. We're dealing with so many unprecedented events and just aspects of running a business right now. And some of them really have had an impact on the recruiting side. Yeah. Um, what what are you what are you seeing out there? I mean, I know that you work with 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 companies all over the country. Are uh, are you guys are you guys busy, busier than normal? What, what, uh, what's going on in the recruiting world? Great question. We, we kind of died a little bit in April. Exterior cleaning uh, and, and, and lawn services and things outside of the home were, were going pretty well still, but the interior stuff was hurting. Um, you know, we own cleaning companies as well, both exterior and interior, so we don't just recruit, but we own cleaning companies as well. And so that that's you know a lot of the maid services and a lot of the residential cleaning kind of kind of pause. Let's pause. Let's pause. Let's pause. So we slowed down drastically. About five to seven days into May, all of a sudden, I mean, literally, like a bell went off. Fifteen clients are like, we're ready to go again. So I mean, it just it just came thumping back hard, and we're we've never been busier. We probably were up seventy five percent, eighty percent in in like three weeks time, which was obviously, uh, which, which we were very fortunate. I always say, you know, my friends know that I'm very um, uh, lucky. Uh, people that don't know me, I let them know how brilliant I am with things. All right. So <laughs> you, know, you, you don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, 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 I always think of you guys as friends. So I know what, which, which end of that spectrum you're on, but but we, uh, we were able to, you know, with the PPP money, we were able to hire back, um, I think, three or four of our of just recruiting employees and, and a week prior to that. And all of a sudden, we were ready to go. And we're, we're at full capacity looking to hire again. So um, so to your point, Tom, that's, what, that's how we are right now. And, and we're, with our own cleaning companies, I mean, we're busy. You know, I think Dan uh, uh, out in Minnesota – We've got a really nice window cleaning company out of there with about 10 or 11 uh, window cleaning techs. And I mean, they're doing tons of business out there right now. 
So do you, are you talking to people that say that they have, have jobs, they have homes to clean and they just don't have enough people to do them? That's where we've kind of flipped to. Yeah. Um, and, and the demand came back just a little bit. And then all of a sudden, just exactly. I think the demand just really came uh, hard and everybody was a little bit behind the eight ball of, of knowing that, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I, we were kind of ready for it just because uh, the PP money happened to be uh, the PPP money happened to be, you know, really good timing for us to hire some people back. Not everybody was fortunate enough maybe for that, but I think, uh, you know, you guys certainly helped a lot of people out. I watched a lot of the stuff you had on, uh, on your channels. And um, so, so right now we're, we're, here's sort of the dynamic, you know, we always talk about matching capacity and demand capacity is, is basically your cleaners or your, your staff and matching that demand so that uh, the demand being how many clients, how much time you need to clean clients and so on. And so right now um, at we're at what, almost 14% unemployment, but it still feels in some parts of the country, like it's about 4% unemployment mm -hmm. still, because we're still having some trouble in certain areas. And, and Liz, to your point on the East coast, there are a couple places out there that are still tough right now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing. So uh, I, I'm glad that you're speaking to that. And I like what you said for a lot of people, it still feels like 4% unemployment. Yep. We, I, I, I keep saying, you know, gosh, it, it's going to flip as soon as the unemployment monies start, you know, yeah. dwindling and going away. And hopefully we're all going to be in a much better position. But for now, it's still, ugh. Yeah. I have, a, I have another friend, business owner, that is losing her um, operations manager and she has um, she's been with her for five years and <laughs> it is a really amazing operations manager yeah. on top of that and so she's you know a little she's probably not as stressy as she should be because she is always so optimistic <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, it's a little scary, you know, and I, and it, it is a little nerve wracking just hoping that those all those good names are going to start popping for right. us. You know? and, Jose employees, what happened, what, what at least we saw happen was you had about a two week window of getting that A employee. Now, these are people that had applications, they're, you know, or not applications, but their resumes and things like that put together, ready to go, that did not ever maybe file unemployment, don't want to file unemployment. That's just not their character. That's not their nature. And that's not something they've ever done. And so they, those people got hired up pretty quickly in about a two week span when states started to open up around the country. That's what we saw happen with our own company uh, and also with our clients. And then it sort of calmed down again. And I think it's, I think we're going to have another about two week window coming up literally maybe in the next week and a half or so. And I think, I think daycares are going to start to open up and that's going to be one of the biggest things that people need to watch in your state. When that opens up, there's some people that are going to be able to come out of the woodwork and come to work. A lot of people. Your lips to God's ears there, Sean. Well, I like it. Yep. We, we, do have, we do have a question on here, uh, Sean. Um, Audra is saying many businesses, business mentors say hire slow and fire fast. What are no. your thoughts about no. this? No, 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 no. <laughs> Here's what I say. We've okay. got so much technology. We've got, you know, if you get a system down, who, who, who out there hasn't heard all of us, all three of us preaching about systems and processes? I mean, that's, right. You know, that's like uh, synergy. That word's been around a long time. All right. We got to come up with new words. But the, but as I say, there's certain uh, fundamental things that will never go away. And processes and systems are one of them. If you have that down, why on earth are you hiring slow? Who in, who in their right mind wants to hire slow? I say hire fast, fire fast. That's what I say. That's me. That's what I always say, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's this hire slow stuff? I mean, you know, we, and, and we have, here's some, you know, we've screwed up a lot of things and, and learned a lot of lessons along the way. And one of the things that happened, I had a cleaning company for 20 years and I sold it to Blue Sky Services and, I, and that's how I'm involved in, in sort of the, the background of me being part of Blue Sky Services. 
And then, you know, what, what part of my job was is to kind of put together the cleaning uh, house cleaning business model a little bit with it. And then we started to uh, think, how are we going to grow this thing? Well, let's go, uh, you know, buy a couple companies. And then we found out real quick how terrible we were at recruiting because when you buy a company, not everybody sticks around for a long time. Uh, you know, we, there, there's a, there's one we bought that was uh, that had a lot of cleaning techs, and all of a sudden seven left right right behind Kathy and George. They were just because Kathy and George are no longer with us, and that and so we had to get good at it. And, and one of the things that I learned um, through that process was. Um, you need if you can't if, if you need to hire more than one or two people a month for sure if you don't have a system that's automated you're in trouble i, I don't know how you can do it unless you have some automation in, in your process and that's right, well, a game changer I, I do have to say though sean one one area that like if i'm going to be hiring for some a position like the operations manager yeah. i i might i might hire a little bit slower there yeah. And I might be a little bit more careful because even though I might have systems for hiring, I don't have a lot of confidence <laughs> that my system for hiring is going to produce the best applicant for that position. I'm pretty confident with my professional position, right. but operations manager or something, I so don't more, know. More practice. I mean, that's something that we're doing on a more regular basis, but yeah. right. And plus, it's leveraged position. Like, you know, an operations manager is something that you don't want to make an impulse buy, you know, because making a bad choice there can, you know, it takes months to get that unwound. Yeah, that's for sure. One one thing, one of the things quickly that, and you're right. I I off I a lot of times I always think of just because I do so much recruiting for cleaning tax. That's really where my focus and mind is most of the time. Although we've done, I, I've placed a ton of operations managers, salespeople, especially the exterior end and lawn service and stuff like that are really looking for a lot of salespeople. And and I think I think home cleaning touches that a little bit, but I think that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger with the maid services. And and I think uh, it's a very difficult thing to for us to figure out. Um, but I think you know it. it <laughs> There, I, I've, I've helped a company out in uh, Baltimore area, a power washing company, um, hire 10 technicians in one month and five salespeople in one month. And he still has four of the salespeople and the majority of the tax. And he grew, I mean, through the roof, obviously. And then we had to get him an operations manager and that sort of thing. But it wasn't, you're right, Liz, uh, tax, not a problem. We took our time on the operations manager a little bit and, and the sales end of it as well. Um, and those are a little bit different birds. I mean, you, you know, we, you don't always, you know, in a cleaning company or a service company, you don't always look for operations manager to Tom's point. And in fact, uh, in, in April, uh, you know, we talked the other buzzword, you have to pivot, right? So I, I, I pivoted like a, a cartoon character real quick when I, when I saw 50% <laughs> of our business go away. Here's how crazy it was. I ended up stumbling into um, uh, recruiting nurses and truck drivers in Canada. So, so that wow. I mean, you want to talk about a whole different world. Um, and so in sales and in, in sales people like territory sales managers at, um, at a big uh, uh, concrete company that sells like these half million dollar machines. And it was a whole different world, but, but, you know, that's a month, a, a lot of month type of recruiting and placing one person. But in that arena also, you know, um, we'll, we'll see a $10,000 check when we place that person. You know, yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't charge that, you can't charge that dollar amount to find a window cleaning tech, a home cleaning tech or something like that. Um, you know, it's an hourly wage, blue collar type of worker. And that's what I love to recruit for. That's my, that's my heart. That's where my passion is. Well, that is why, uh, you know, we send people over to you all the time. Your name's the first one, right? When people are like, I'm struggling. Have you called Sean? Yeah, yeah, blue skies. Come on, give him a shot. <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a question here uh, from Leslie. She wants to know what you mean by automation when it comes to hiring cleaning tech, Sean. Can you go into that a little bit more detail yeah, for us? That's a great question. There, so, so basically, you, you know, you can do your automation a few different ways. Um, and let me let me I think before you take the automation uh, or, or let me let me step back because there's one important issue that you need to really address prior to the automation. 
because if you don't have application flow, there's not a hell of a lot to automate. You got to have application flow, right? So you know, what we tend to see with businesses, and we used to do the same thing, and it was one of the learning curves for us, was that we tended, and, and a lot of small business owners, because of our frustration with finding bad people, right? Or what we consider, you know, these guys stink, this application stinks, that person stinks. We all have frustrations with employees. So, so what happens is you go on Indeed, 200 applications come and they all stink. That's all. I hear that weekly. I hear that every week. So, so what tends to happen is we want to, we want to put a job description together that says, if you do this, you you can't work here. If you do that, you can't work here. And you, you we know you stink already. You know, you're, you're screening people out. Now, now, now think about this for a minute. I was saying at the beginning, it is, it's a lot like sales recruiting is. How do you run your ads for prospective clients? If you don't want to pay full price or you don't pay me or you, you don't screen them out at the beginning, you market, love them, and you want, you want to let them know you're going to work your rear end off for them, you're going to appreciate them. Those are the things you need to do with employees as well. Your job description and should match your culture, whatever that should be, right? We all want people to show up. We all want them to make our customers happy. I mean, it, there's not a company that doesn't want that. But keep that funnel nice and big on top and just make sure that you get as many applications as you can. And with us, we can go through thousands of applications while I'm in bed sleeping. Think about it, you know, and it, our, our system's automated where it weeds them out. So how do you automate, right? That's her question. Let me answer yeah. that very, very, very direct. There's basically kind of two ways. One is, um, and I think the easiest way is to go find yourself an application tracking system. There's hundreds of them out there. Okay. There's uh, we happen to use career plug. That's one of them. Um, there's, there's all kinds of app. There's Zoho. There's all kinds of different application tracking systems. Look that up, Google it, and you'll, you'll have fun going through five pages of application tracking systems. But what an application tracking system in basically is this, you put an ad out there on indeed or Facebook or something and Jane or Joe clicks on it because they're interested in the job and it redirects them, redirects them into your application tracking system automatically. That's number one automation. Number, number two part of that is you can make certain questions and all these other things. We have um, 35 questions that they have to answer that are industry specific, that are very, very specific to, to our cleaning companies, to the cleaning industry. And so, they click an ad, it automatically sends them into the system. They automatically have to answer the questions and then they hit submit. They automatically, it will give us a score. So while I'm in church, while I'm with my family, while I'm sleeping, um, I'm getting applications with scores. If they're not at a certain score, they get an email that says, thanks, go away. It's much prof more professional than that, nicer, but we make them go away. If they have a certain score above, then we take them on to do more. Now, that's one way to do it. The other way that you can do it is there's things like um, you can probably do a Google Forms. If you have Service Autopilot, there's some automation in there with some forms. Um, you know, so it, it, I don't know enough about that because I didn't like that when I did try it. It wasn't what I wanted, but it, it will automate some things for you. So if you look up certain things with Google Forms and some other things, you can do that. Is the communication through this automation primarily done through email? Text and email. We like to text. Um, you know, whatever this, you guys probably all heard the data with that, right? 95% of the people will look at a text and probably respond compared to emails, what, 30% or somewhere in there, maybe 10%, 30%. Um, there's really no chance of going into a spam folder or junk or get blocked, and, you know, with text. So we can, we, de we definitely like to text, but we do both. Is the text automated? It is, yes. So um, are people like able to fill out an application in text or how does, how does that work? You, well, based, not really that I know of, and I don't know that there'd be an advantage to that, but what, what you can do is, they can do 80, I think it's 80 or 85% of the people now, not just blue collar hourly labor, but 80 to 85% of the people apply for jobs on their phones now. So mm -hmm. everything we do is very mobile friendly, very um, device friendly. 
um, not just with iOS, not just with Windows, but we're very friendly with all devices. And that's how most platforms are. Or I, if you really want to make sure, though, Tom, that that's the case, because for, I don't know that all are, but I would say a lot of the majority of them are very mobile friendly. So it is device friendly and mobile friendly, but the communication back and forth, we like to use text. So, Sean, one of the things you said was that you ask about 35 questions. Do you ask all 35 questions through text? No, we, it's, it's basically part of their application. So our, we, we completely, our application doesn't look like anybody else's unless you're a client of ours. I mean, we, we'll ask stuff like, uh, let, me, let me give you a couple examples that are, um, I like this one because, uh, let me tell you why, I've got some data behind this one. So this one, um, I call it um, 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 what if. What if we hired you, which of these three things would tick you off the most, basically? That's the question. They can't come up with their own answer. I have three choices. It's A, B, or C. You need to choose one. And let, like me, give you, let me give you an example on this. I love these. So one of them is if they answer this way, and this is the lowest score, by the way. Yeah. And you would think it wouldn't be maybe, okay? But here it is. Um, somebody's always late to work and management or owners never do a thing about it. And we consider that, okay, on the surface, that might seem like, well, sure, you should be upset about that. But here, I've got data behind this. Over the last couple of years, by talking to past employees, um, emailing past employees, and some of them telling me to go to hell when they <laughs> and didn't talk to me, but, you know, I, a lot of them did talk to me. And current employees that answer this way, and some of the managers, and our uh, production managers, and we came and saw this common denominator like you wouldn't believe. And the common denominator with that answer was that is your drama king or queen and your gossip king and queen. And and if you think about it, and by the way, the ones that answered in that manner lasted only about nine months on average with Blue Sky Services before we either fired them or they quit which is not good. You want obviously more than nine months, but we definitely found that to be the drama king or queen. And that ruins your culture. As everybody knows, you can't have people that are drama king and queens or gossipers. And I, I, so that's the data behind it. And so now, you know, after a few decades of doing this, you got to put your gut feeling into it a little bit. And if I think about that question and the answer, and the answer again is I get upset if somebody's late to work all the time and nothing's ever done about it, I'm telling you, I'm going to be upset on what somebody else is either doing or not doing. Okay. That's called gossip. And if I'm pissed off about that, I'm going to run my mouth about it. And that's gossip. You want to stay. I've got 35 questions like that, that are, uh, that are really help us um, dissect who, who's going to be good or not. And I, I always joke real quickly and then I'll, I'll, I'll shut my mouth. I always joke and say, by the time somebody gets vetted by us, and this, I mean this, and we, and by the way, if we don't talk to them, we don't email them, and we don't text them, and we know a lot about them, more than what most of their family does or most of their friends do before we even communicate with them because so of our screening questions. questions that I guess you've developed over your years of experience, and depending on how they answer these questions, they might be disqualified as a candidate, you wouldn't spend any more time with them. And, and Tom, that's exactly right. And there's a certain score that we know that there's a certain, that that person is likely to last less than a year with most companies if they get hired. That's the data behind it. So we don't want that person. Um, well, you know, Sean, that's one of the things that we teach in foundations is that um, the, the question is less important than the answer, right. and you need to know what the right answer is and what the wrong answer is Absolutely. and give them a score. And that is the, like the quickest way that, is. that you can, you, you can get, figure out exactly what it is that you're doing. Now, it, it, the, the thing, too, is that it takes the emotion out of it, right? 
so how many times do you talk to somebody on the phone or and all or even their name you know if it, if there's a name that you know a couple people or you don't like somebody then you get a emo we'll get emotional about a lot of different things that takes the emotion out of it too and and you know it, it, you're less likely i think to make mistakes if you go on data um than emotions yeah, absolutely. Data over emotions uh, every every day, all day long. Uh, but but you know, a lot of times um, it, it's hard to hard to come up with too. Uh, really, really good data. So it you is. know, uh, that, 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 can, that can also be a little tricky. Hey, Sean, I have another question here that I see I missed. Um, Leslie is asking, do you automate anything past the application process? Oh yeah. Yeah, so you go through 35 questions and then um, and, and some of the other questions, by the way, and uh, you, you could come up with your own is uh, another set of about 15, maybe 10 questions is if you owned a cleaning company. Okay. And, then, and then we have questions with that. That uncovers a lot of stuff as well. So, um, yeah, then we have them do five assessments. Uh, more like the DISC type of thing, the DISC profile or personality or psychological type of assessments. Those, are, those aren't ones that we came up with. That's outsourced, but it's within the, the system. And, um, for example, we have them do, I, my favorite is emotional stability, right? That's, that, that's what this assessment's called. It's called emotional stability. We want to know, you know, let's face it, we hire people that don't have $50,000 in their savings, driving Porsches, and have, you know, 6,000 square foot homes. Most of the people we hire don't. Um, we all have problems. The, 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 the million dollar question is, are you able to come to work and not have those problems affect your work one way, shape, or form? You know, how can you handle stress at work? Driving is stressful. Clients can be stressful. Working with other human beings can be stressful. Construction, when you need to be somewhere, is stressful. Your car breaking down is stressful. All those things we know, that's just one assessment that helps us uncover somebody's ability to handle stress. Um, we, we, we also have one um, that I like that is, um, what's the other one I love is, um, conscientious so it'll tell us how organized they are are they able to follow processes and systems i love that one because i call it the one that tells me whether or not i have to babysit somebody and if i don't have to babysit somebody i'm a happy camper and that that's another one i love and we have five about five of those that they have to go it takes a good hour hour and a half to get through the system before anybody even communicates with you wow so, that, that is yeah. a lot you, we started off this discussion about basically getting candidates, getting people to say, hey, I might be interested in working with you. You mentioned Indeed. Is, are there other? You know, how do you rate the various platforms that are out there in terms of your you know, best outcomes in terms of just getting candidates? I, I would say probably Indeed is here's here's my Indeed. Um, <laughs> here's how I feel about Indeed. Indeed is um, like my 16 year old girlfriend who drove me crazy, but I couldn't live without. Okay. When I was in high school and I was 16. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> That's a lot of information right there, Sean. I'm glad you clarified. I'm glad you clarified. I'm so me too. That was me out. <laughs> so I, let, me, let me definitely add that. And I hope you don't edit that out, Tom. Um, so, so, but that's seriously because it's Sean. Good. Just, just FYI, Sean. This is live. Oh, all right, good. You can't all right. Edit anything all right. Else. Perfect. That's once you said it. it's on the once you say it, it's on the internet forever. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's clunky. It's not easy. They're, they, they, most of them do stink that come across, but they have a lot. They're the largest. The one thing that we've found to be very successful with Indeed lately lately in the last three weeks that was never like this before was their resume database searching through their resume database has been a game changer over the last three weeks we're able to go in there and anybody can go in there if as long as you have an account with them it's free to get an account um it, you go into their database and i can find out who updated their resume yesterday today oh. a week ago a month ago and that's pretty powerful if you think about it, because 
it's pretty unlikely somebody's taking the time to update their resume today or yesterday and that's not looking for a job, right? We know that. But we've also, um, there, there's um, something, and I, I may mispronounce this, but I know what it is. I just may have not pronounced it right. Boolean search, B-O-O-L-E-A-N. And it's got these parentheses and these quotations and this whole different way that you can search. And when, I, when we're searching for data uh, for resumes, and I'll give you just an example of, of some things. One thing with searching for resumes, whether it's in ZipRecruiter or, or, or Indeed, is you, know, you don't want to just put um, house cleaner or window cleaner or whatever you're hiring uh, for, whatever. Because if you do that, you're really limiting the scope or, or the amount of resumes you can be uh, sifting through. I mean, literally, that can take you from 30 resumes However, if I put in there the word housekeeper, it can go up to a thousand resumes. If I put both of those in there, if I put general labor, so there's all kinds of things you need to think about that, um, you know, if you're retail, you know, I always, I always tell our, our clients, you know, how many retail people, uh, why don't you want to hire somebody that works retail or a server at a, I mean, my mother was a, was a waitress or a server. My wife was when she was young. All And they were some of the two of the hardest working people I ever met in my life. And I, I would have hired them in a minute uh, for my house cleaning business. And to tell them that they didn't have to work weekends, nights, and holidays, and Christmas Eve, and New Year's Eve, and probably make as much money. Um, you know, th there's, there's labor pools that you definitely want to pull from with that. Uh, so those, that's, that's one. But I would say... Um, I would say that uh, um, Craigslist has made a comeback. I would have told you a couple years ago that they were horrible. They were gone. They're done. But there's certain things that you can do in, in Craigslist. Um, there's, there, we put in, uh, for example, these tags at the very bottom of our, our ad, and it's made a complete whole different amount of people applying. It, it was amazing. And we put those tags in, uh, you know, we have to kind of format it a little bit with HTML. So that gets a little bit hard to do and tricky. We've got it figured out though, because we put the system together to do it. Uh, and we just make it basically invisible to, to anybody that looks at the ad when it's there. And we have these little keywords on the very bottom in this very small print you can't see that says things like house cleaner in Cleveland, cleaning tech in Cleveland, general labor, and all the keywords that somebody might look into. And that brings up a lot more. We also use Facebook and Facebook groups and all kinds of things like that that have been working pretty well for us and our clients. Um, those are our main ones there. Well, um, so so the, the, that's pretty much what I, I'm finding where I am also. But again, I'm over on the West Coast. Are you finding that um, different parts of the country are having different things going on, yeah. Sean? Yeah, it, it's it's been like that. It's been like that for for as long as I've been in recruiting, though. And I'll I'll tell you, there's um, uh, Salt Lake City for whatever reason is one of the hardest places that we've had to recruit. We've got clients there, and I don't know why necessarily. Um, right now on the East Coast, it is a, a little bit more difficult right now, and I think maybe I, I and I might uh, be shooting myself in the foot, but there's. I think there's still a few states that aren't quite as open as the state of Ohio, for example, where I'm at and Derek's at. Um, you know, we've pretty much got everything open, but daycare and one or two other things. So I think those are some of the things that are, are, are a little bit different. Um, we find, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to be political in any sense, I'm just giving you the facts. We, we found that some of the states that are looking to increase that minimum wage to that $15 or $16 or more, are much more difficult to recruit than the states that aren't looking into that or haven't started to do that. There's a lot of major cities that already are bumping up minimum wage. $16 an hour? Yep. Wow. Where is that? Liz, is that, yeah, that must be you guys, right? No, that's not us. Uh, I don't know. Where's 16? I think Minneapolis is at $15 an hour. There's a, it, it, And some of it isn't by state, Tom. Some of it's by city, too. 15, I've heard. I haven't heard 16 anywhere yet. yeah 15 we, we have but 16 where's 16 sean i don't know where 16 is it's like like 15 15 then 15, oh, okay. Okay. So 15 16 dollars still, still a still a high bar very high yeah bar. 
And, and for whatever reason, that's those are states that are more difficult to recruit, or those cities that have it. You know, um, how so? You mentioned in like Indeed, actually searching resumes. I know a lot of people use Indeed. They'll go in and they'll post a job ad, kind of like fishing. You throw your bait out there and you wait for you know somebody to come along and and and, and take it and apply. But I guess the flip side of it is there's a lot of people out here that have their resumes. So it's, I guess I would look more like hunting as opposed to fishing. You need to go yeah. out there. And so for the people that you guys hire, what percentage of them do you get by fishing versus hunting? It's a good question. Um, I would say that right now we're probably getting – probably 30% of our application flow from resume database searching. Okay. Oh. That's significant. That's significant. Yeah. It wasn't like that. And, and that's, that's probably over the last month. So I don't know that that's going to remain the case. Um, but it certainly is the case right now. We also have, um, and this is a, it's very expensive. So not everybody's going to be able to do it, but there's this, you know, the buzzword artificial intelligence. Prior to COVID, when you're at, you know, there, there were some places that were at 2% unemployment before COVID, right? 3% unemployment was easy to find. Um, um, that meant that every single human being that was physically and mentally able to work was working, more or less, right? The ones that weren't employed, you probably didn't want to employ. Uh, so what do you do after that? There was a, a, a study that I read that said something like, 80% of the people that answered this study or they, they that answer a survey in this study said that they that they're happy where they're at, but they would certainly look at something else if it came their way. We call that a passive candidate, somebody that's not actively looking for a position. But if you could just find them and tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, did you know you didn't have to work week, nights, weekends and holidays and make as much or more money? That, how do you tap into that person? We do it through artificial intelligence. I can go on LinkedIn, for example, which isn't the best place for blue collar workers to hang out, but more are there than ever before. And LinkedIn is actually trying to compete with Facebook to try to get some more blue collar type of um, hourly wage blue collar people wanting to be in the mix on LinkedIn a little bit more than they've had in the past. So I think that's going to be something you're going to want to look into um, you know, sooner than later. There's also, uh, and we have artificial intelligence where we can go in there and it kind of automatically pulls up a list where I can go in and say, find me some housekeepers and um, it might pull a list in this area um, and, and it'll pull me a list of, of housekeepers. And those are just people that happen to be, you know, working at uh, a hotel or, or whatever they're doing, or maybe working for a cleaning company. And I'm going to message them or try to connect with them. And I'm going to say, hey, I own a cleaning company. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, by the way, uh, do you want a job? Had you ever thought about a job here? I've got a client that offers health benefits that uh, you might not be getting where you're at right now. Or, and you just kind of get some things to go that way. Or, uh, you know, would you consider looking at another opportunity? And, and then we throw them a link to that, that, uh, that they click on. It redirects them into the application tracking system. They answer the questions. It's all automated and boom. But you can't do that unless you have some money to invest because that's it's, it's not cheap to have artificial intelligence automating and going through the web and scraping, you know, websites for you and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I can see the value, but I can also see how, yeah, it could get it could get pricey trying yeah. to build out some of this stuff. You're talking you're talking about five or ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if you have a nice, really big company, then it, it might make sense for you, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Shannon, we got to let, let me see what we have going on here. Shannon, uh, yep, paying $15 an hour. Yeah, I think a lot of people are paying more than, um, a lot more than minimum wage, but it's just sure. hard. If minimum wage is fifteen dollars and you try to pay somebody fifteen dollars, they're offended. <laughs> they're like, I'm not working for minimum wage. So the, the fifteen dollar price tag has a whole different connotation depending on you know what the what the minimum wage is there. Uh, Leslie, Leslie again, she is on this hiring. Good job, Leslie. 
she wants to know any specific applicant questions that you are willing to share. And also, what are your five tests that you were that you said that you um, do, Sean? I heard the first part of that, Liz. I'll give some questions. What was the second question? Uh, she also wanted to know what are the five tests. Tests. Oh, the assessment. The yeah, the assessment. Um, okay, so I'll answer the first one first. Um, I, what I can do is I can, if, if you either want to message me or, uh, uh, you know, through Facebook, or if you want me to put a link up there, Tom or Liz, however you want to work this out, I'll be happy to give a free, um, we gave it out at, um, the ISA RC convention, um, when I did some things with, uh, uh, there, it's a blueprint. It's about 35 pages. It's a blueprint. It'll give you the, most of the questions we ask. It'll basically have every, or it'll have our system and you can, if you want to, if you have the time and uh, you know, it took me, it took me about a year to put ours together. So literally, uh, so I'll, I'll be happy to give that away uh, for any of your audience or anybody that's listening. You, you know what we could do? We're kind of making this up on the fly here, but I'm sure uh, cleaning business today would be happy to sponsor a webinar and basically create an audience for you where you could, you know, get into more details, you know, deeper than what we normally would with, with smart business moves if, if people want to get into that. Sure. But also, if you could give Tom that link, that would be awesome, Sean. And yeah. Tom has a secret special scroll yeah, page on, on cleaning businesses today just for smart business moves that, that, that we could post that in. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it'll give you, it'll give you, it, it's the, basically the system we use, but there's, there's just, you know, some of the questions that you want to ask, let me, I'll just give one more example maybe is, um, um, you know, we want to ask a question like this. Are you more comfortable, um, uh, you know, knowing you're getting off at five o'clock every day, or are you okay that you might get off at one, you might get off at three, you might get off at six. And obviously in our industry, you're not going to get off at five o'clock every day. That's one example. I mean, you don't, you, you shouldn't even look at somebody that says five o'clock is when I need to get off. Yeah, I need to know when I'm getting off every day. You, you, we can't do that in this business. We just can't. There's, you know, there, so that's one, you know, I can't, really, I, I didn't come up with this one, but this one, I almost fell out of my chair when I got the data behind this one. I didn't come up with the question. It's, it's a question, you know, very easy. On a scale from one to 10, rate your luck in life, right? And um, so what had happened was we found, and there's two exceptions to the rule, and I'll tell you what those are, but we found people that answered a six or below literally lasted a whopping three months or less with our company if they answered that their luck in life was under a, a, at six or below. And what we and we always ask them to tell us why. And and that person basically, as most of you might be able to guess, is they don't take ownership in anything. They have all the bad luck in the world. Nobody else does. It has nothing to do with their actions. It has nothing to do with their choices in life. It's just woe is me and the cloud follows me everywhere. Everybody else is lucky I'm not. You don't want somebody like that that's going to bring everybody else down. The two exceptions very quickly are every now and again we'll get somebody that says, you know, my mother just passed away of cancer or, you know, some very, some kind of one-off horrible things happen to them. And, we, you know, we take exception to that. The other one actually is the best answer. And we rate this one very high. Usually we will get maybe either the number five, which is right in the middle, or zero. But they follow it up and say something like this. I don't believe in luck. I believe in working my rear end off and I get what I deserve. And sometimes I don't get what I deserve, but I just keep chugging along. That's the human being I love to hire. The five assessment questions, I'll, uh, I'll, it'll be in the link that, uh, that, are, that are on there uh, when we get, the, if you want to get the uh, blueprint that we have, uh, th those are in there. That, that sounds great. I, I think that would be uh, a huge benefit for people, Sean. Uh, a lot of times I think people get, we, we all get stuck, right, in yeah. one part of the process for whatever reason. We're, we're going along, but this part just seems too hard. Or Yeah, Leslie's saying, thank you, Sean, exclamation point. <laughs> she must be like me, right, stuck in one part of the process. So it feels good to have like a, a process that's laid out that, that makes good sense. Yeah. Um, you, you know, Sean, since we do smart business moves every day here at five o'clock Eastern on Facebook, I should probably just 
ask about Facebook. From a recruiting standpoint, how big is, as a cleaning business owner, how should I be looking at Facebook as a recruiting tool? I think a couple of things. One is I think you need to join, go in, do a search for um, um, jobs in your area. Put, your, put the lens on of a, a person looking for a job. OK, because that's what you want to know. You want to be able to read their mind and figure out what they want. So we go into different uh, groups on Facebook that basically are posting jobs in that specific geographic area. And we'll, we'll start to interact a little bit there. We'll start to maybe message a couple people that look like, um, you know, they'd be somebody we would uh, want to communicate with. We'll post our link up there. We'll post jobs up there. But we also sponsor. Um, some jobs uh, uh, on Facebook where we might spend $50 over five days and it might catch maybe five to 10,000 people um, and they literally will apply on Facebook. Facebook's not real good platform for making it automated. They make it really difficult to get it get out of Facebook because they want to keep everybody in their platform. So it's a bit clunky. Not, I don't like it, but it's a, it's effective enough where we spend time doing that on behalf of our clients. It doesn't integrate well with your applicant tracking system. Yeah, it, it posts well. So I can, you know, in our application tracking system, when we post one job in there, it'll automatically post to dozens of different places, including Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's nice. But when somebody applies on Facebook and sees an ad of ours on Facebook, it stays in Facebook. We got to go fetch it out of Facebook and put a link up there and it's not automated and it's got to go. Then they have to click on it. Then it becomes automated from there. Okay. Facebook's just. Oh, one, of, one of the things that we talked about, Sean, uh, before we got on this call was you said that there are certain things that people have to watch out for mistakes yeah. that, that they make kind of routinely and that uh, you had some ideas to watch out for these potential pitfalls. Yeah. What are, yeah. What are some of those? A, a couple, uh, I mentioned a few and sprinkled a few throughout, but get if uh, let's go back to Indeed for a minute. Everybody that has an Indeed account um, has a rep that you might not know it because they're, they're not, they don't really connect real well with their clients. Um, Get a hold of your rep and ask as many questions as you can about the platform. One of the things that I found out, which I don't know how you would find out unless you talk to your rep and he and, and he or she was good, was and I, I used to have a standing call every Monday with my Indeed rep. I wanted to know what changed, not 10 months ago. I wanted to know what changed this week and last week. Um, and I still stay in touch with them. But one of the things was in a job title and Indeed, if you have more than a certain amount of characters, so a letter, a dash, a, 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 a quote, characters, right? If you had a certain amount too many, it would kill your application flow by 35%. That's just What's how, that number? That's how their system ran. I don't know. I think it's 35, but don't quote me on that. 35, I, I think, is the number, but don't quote me on that. Also, if it's uh, less than a certain amount, if it's not long enough, it will harm you. The same thing within the job description. If you have too long of a job description, app flow dies. If you have too short of a job description, app flow dies. Oh, and does that change? So is that what you're saying, Sean, that that changes? So you want to stay in touch with your rep and make sure that you're with it, it, the, whatever the freshest info is? That's that's one thing I learned by talking to my rep. So my my one of my kind of gold nuggets would be to talk to your rep at, at, at whether it's ZipRecruiter or wherever you you know you're you're using Indeed. I would highly recommend using Indeed for sure. ZipRecruiter, I've gone back and forth on right now. We're not using them very much. They haven't been very you know we spent a lot of money trying to figure some things out with them, and we just aren't happy with ZipRecruiter at all. The customer service is great. The people are great, but the you know that's fine. But if you're not getting the application flow that I need, I don't care how nice you are, I can't use you. Um, so one of the other things is um, Indeed used to be really nice with post something free and you still got a bunch of application flow. They're doing something and they're not announcing it, but there's no doubt the data's changed and it's not just because of COVID. They can only survive so long on free jobs. They make their money when you pay them to sponsor jobs. They're changing something in their system. I don't know what, 
But uh, more and more and more, uh, we are spo- we're, we're always sponsoring jobs now. We don't do we we here here's here's a really big gold nugget with Indeed. Sponsor the free stuff for at least a week. You should get some pretty good application flow. After two weeks, you should be okay. After that, sponsor it for two weeks, then stop. Refresh and repost the job. Brand, like it's a brand new job, free. You'll be good for a week or two. Sponsor it for two weeks. Never ever, you could actually harm yourself sponsoring it right away. Because wow. here's what people do. They say, I'm going to throw $100 at that. And normally it's set up, you can set it up monthly or you can set it up by the day. A lot of people, $10 a day or something. Well, if you do that, you can say, let's say you did it today's Monday and it's $10 a day. Well, by by eight o'clock in the morning, you might have spent that ten dollars because it doesn't go very far. If you would have posted it free, you would have been on page one, probably in the top three to five for the week. So don't sponsor anything. I, I highly suggest week. for the first week at least on Indeed. If you start to see your application flow really diminish, that's that's a bell that says time to boost. But then after thirty days. Go back, close the job out completely, repost it like a brand new job, and it'll come right back on top again for you. Okay, that's that's a good little hint right there too, Sean. Yep. Yeah, that's really good. Um, one of the things that I have seen happening for a lot of people lately, um, there are a few things. So the, the new thing is when you're writing your ads, write everything that's great about your company. And so give like, the first thing is like 10 bullet points of what's great about your company. But one of the things I'm noticing is people are putting things in there that are not necessarily, uh, here's my favorite one that I see. Um, A fun place to work. But then people come in and on day one, (laughs) all business, right? Here's your uniform, here's this, here's that. And people are like, this is not a fun place to work. And right. So they're they're struggling in that in that way. So that fun you- what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just did a, a, a one of our Facebook lives and we do it like I said every Thursday night, nine Eastern, we do a Facebook live. I've got a group called Blue Collar Recruited. That's what we talk about. All right. So we got a Tom you're gonna put that hold on just a second, Sean. Tom, can you put that link up for us in um, our secret Sure. Sean's going to send me an email with all kinds yep. of Blue collar recruiting. Yep. And all we do is talk about, I shouldn't say recruiting because we talk about sales and some other things too, but um, culture is huge, right? And that's to Liz's point. We're talking about culture. I have everybody that wants to do business with us and have us recruit for them. Okay. I have them fill out a company profile. One of the questions is, I want you to describe what your culture is. Nice. If, if, if you can't match your culture with what you're putting in a job description, you're not gonna, that employee is never going to last. You're not going to retain that employee. I don't care what you do. How many times, and you're right, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've either heard um, from people that we said, we, we'll follow up and say, hey, how's the job going? Well, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to last very long. Here's what happened on day one. I came to work. There was five people out smoking, saying the F word left and right, doing this one. <laughs> And, and complaining about uh, the, the job, you know, and then I'm going, okay, that didn't, that wasn't in the job description at all. I remember putting together for my client, right? I forgot to put that whole smoking, swearing thing in there. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, that, that's just not good. We, we actually like it when somebody, you know, and, and I apologize because I've been out of the day-to-day stuff with the cleaning end, but when I wasn't, we used to assign one person. If we knew somebody was coming in that day for the first day of work, that person stood by the door and their only job in the morning was to stand by the door and treat that person coming in like they were the queen of England. And that person, you go out, if you think, if you know that's the new person, you open the door, you run out to them and shake their hand and ask them and introduce yourself. And well, you, you used them. to shake their hand in a COVID world. <laughs> yeah. <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> Now you just you can't get that close anymore. We're, we're, we're up against the hour here. Okay. So I'm going to, as we're kind of wrapping up, just share real quick. Um, this is our new format. And 
Sean, I don't know if you know this or not, but we changed the format of smart business moves and we're putting out like in a, a, a schedule for the entire week. And you are our first guest under the new format. Woo! And Everyone, you're the first. Please be the first guest of the new format. Any pick again. All right. So, you know, I hope that you guys like this. Please give us feedback as to how, how you know, how we can, can make this even more helpful. But, you know, we're going to be covering a broader scope of topics other than just uh, COVID, um, daily guests, more education. As you can see here, Sean was our guest today. Tomorrow is going to be more getting caught up for the week. You know, where uh, well, I would suspect that by this time tomorrow, we'll have more information, more guidance on the new uh, PPP law that was passed last week. So we're hoping to do more of a deep dive on that and other topics of things that have happened over the last week. Uh, Followed by Wednesday, Martha Woodward, she rocks. She's going to be talking about building culture as you're opening your business back up. Paul Weber, who is a friend of Liz's, um, financial planning for your employees, how to help your employees uh, learn financial management and take uh, and build wealth for themselves, creating a win-win for, for, for them and for you and your company. And we're going to do on the spot on Friday, which is just a rapid fire Q&A process where you guys ask a question and Liz, myself, and a special guest that we can't tell you who it's going to be. We'll all have one minute. We'll have a timer that we'll use to each use one minute to answer the question. And when that minute's up, we have to quit and it goes to the next person. And it's uh, something that we do in foundations have done it for a number of years and it's really awesome. And, uh, we're going to incorporate that, that into smart business moves. Um, anything on that, Liz, that uh, I need to expand upon? Nope. I just need to say to Leslie, Leslie, I'm so sorry we ran out of time today. Uh, maybe hit Sean up um, uh, on Facebook, and I'm sure he'll he'll expand for you. I know that we do need to get to the new platform. It is fresh today, right, Tom? Oh, it is. Um Here's a clean business today. Here's our link with all of the uh, super special stuff that we share on um, smart business moves. And John's gonna give us some information, and we'll we'll post that here. And anybody who's signed up for for a class, either the COVID class or the uh, or PHC, should have gotten an email today. If uh, you've been a student, you would have gotten an email. If you are an administrator for your company, you would have gotten a separate email. And inside of those emails were links to videos in terms of how to use the new platform, how to set up your account, and how to get going. Um, I know there's been a couple of questions today, a few questions that have come in, and I, uh, I'm in, of, um, I am of the understanding that we're uh, doing a good job of answering those. If anybody's having any trouble or whatever, please uh, hit us up either at help at moderncleaning.com. That's probably the best way to, to let us know. And uh, we'll, we'll be glad to help you through that. That's all I got, Liz. All right. That's great. Actually, we said we could go up to two minutes late. So, Sean, do you, can you answer this question in two minutes? Sure. Leslie says, I pay per click, so I'm confused by the sponsor verbiage. I don't pay to post a job just for each applicant. Can you clarify, please? Well, pay per click is when it, is what it sounds like, and that is somebody will see your job on there, click on the job, and you'll get charged for that. And it's charged on a certain average, so it, it, it's different in Cleveland, Ohio, than it might be in Los Angeles. Uh, it could be five dollars per application. Uh, it could be it could be two dollars. So if you're only sponsoring ten dollars a day, that could literally mean only three applications for that day, and then your job is no longer posted on Indeed. So hopefully that explains it. So right. I, it uh, if it's free, it's there. It might not be as high, but they don't take it down, right? It'll stay there usually in the, you know, if you know what you're doing with job descriptions and keywords, it'll stay there on top, maybe the top three to five, at least on page one for, for a week or so. And then after that, it could start to really drop down. And, and week two, you know, you might find it on page two. 
Okay. So hope, hopefully that cleared it up, Leslie. I'm going to say um, very quickly, I answer that in less than two minutes. So I got one more thing I want to say. Tom, okay. I'm going to give you a link. And if anybody wants to um, find out more about our service, there's a bunch of big discounts specifically on that link for your listeners and your students um, that are going to save a ton of dough. It's only for you guys, though. Um, it's CB. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll just give it to you. You do what you want with it. And we'll help as many people as we can. And if you don't want to do anything, that's fine too. Perfect. Thanks so much, Sean. We appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Thank All you, right. Sean. Take you guys, care, care, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern. Bye bye. Bye.